How will people's choice top 100 games of all time? Top 100 games of all time. <laughs> Woo! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the top 100 list. Now, this is very exciting for many different reasons. One, this is the first year we're doing this. Well, I, well this is the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six year that I've done my top 100 list, but this is the first year that we've done the people's choice. Let me explain. You have what we did is we put up a forum on the internet where we said rate your top 20 games. Now some people put in just five, some people put in 10. But what's interesting about this top 100 list that we've formed is that we gave your number one game 20 votes and your number two 19 votes, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as time goes, what this does is some things. Uh, if you hate a game, you can't negatively affect it. So we're only looking at games that people really like. So you're not going to, some games that maybe have very sharply divided opinions, it's not going to drag them down. This, these games are games that are popular and people really like them. There's no, a lot of people kind of like it. No, these are games that people really like. And I'm really impressed with the top 100 list that has shown up here. Um, and so, we're, and don't think, oh, that game's ranked 100, it must be terrible. Folks, there are thousands. I believe we had several thousand games that were picked by people, but only 100 made the top 100. There was 990 or so of you that voted on this, which I think is a pretty good uh, representation, and I was very pleased with the games. I think you're going to be really surprised at some of them, but for now, let's get started with number 100. Number 100, Imperial. Well, I was kind of hoping your 101 would make it in, Cash and Guns, but it did not. Instead, we are stuck with your 100, Imperial, a game I do not like. But this is not about me. This is about your choices. So let's talk about Imperial. Imperial is a game in which you are a banker in Europe trying to, you know, basically have the most money in a sense. But there's different countries that are vying, fighting for each other. So there's kind of like two levels. The countries are going at it, you know, trying to be the most powerful country there is. And at the same time, you are trying to have stakes in different countries. You can put all your, you know, eggs in one basket in one country or you can spread out. So your turn might be short because you don't actually control a country. But as long as you have control in the different countries, you can do well. Does that sound confusing? It kind of is. It's a, certainly a heavy game. This is not a light game by any means. It's, uh, for me, a, a, a dry game, but a lot of people have a big, you know, or it has a big following, enough that an expansion, I think it's called Imperial 2030, came out. Uh, or not an expansion, but like a sequel game to it. So if you like games that really force you to make tough economic decisions, and it almost has, has kind of a, uh, uh, some relationship, in my opinion, to diplomacy, then this one's for you. This was your 100, Imperial. Number 99, Age of Steam. Well, this is obviously not my top 100 games, but you know, as we go through, what do we have? Number 99, Age of Steam, Age of Steam. By Martin Wallace, this is a train game that many people consider to be the definitive train game. It has spawned some successors, Steam and Railroad Tycoon, or Railways of the World, which you may or may not see later on on your list. But Age of Steam is a brutal, tough economic game where you're building trains on a board uh, and then transporting goods from city to city. It is tough. For your first game, if you've never played the game before, there's a good chance you might do very poorly at it uh, because you just don't understand how it works. Once you get it, it, it goes very smoothly. Well, smoothly is a kind of a, you know, it has a really cutthroat nature to it uh, as you're stealing goods from other players and trying to outmaneuver them on the board. Now, one of the good things about Age of Steam is the fact that there's many, many, many maps out there. There's even a map on the sun, but you know, any city, any country can think of, there's likely a map for that. So, Age of Steam, uh, the tough economic train game, is your number 99. 98, Princess of Florence. Number 98 is the Princess of Florence. Wow, this is certainly not my list of top 100. The Princess of Florence is, by nature, 
It's one of those games that came out that is kind of like the precursor to many games today. Uh, economic Euro game of buying and auctioning and placing pieces and when you look at it from a distance, it means nothing. Now, it looks cool. You're trying to buy different buildings and put them in the thing and trying to get different things, and it's all about getting points. And it's one of those games in which you try to get points this way and points another way, and, and it really helps to have played multiple times to know when different things come up for auction, how much to bid on them. It has a very nice design, and if there wasn't 600 cabillion games about the medieval period, this would be one that I would think you know very highly of, or the Renaissance period. But uh, it is one that a lot of people enjoy for quite a long time. It was one of the highest rated games in a, you know, on the market. Puerto Rico came out and kind of dethroned it. But obviously, still enough of you like it that it would make the top 100 list, and that's Princess of Florence. Not number 97, Formal D. Formula D, or as it originally was called, Formula Day. Now this is a game that did not make my personal top 100, but it certainly, I can see why people enjoy it so much, and it actually has made my top 200. Uh, but Formula D is a racing game, and it's a, it's a lucky racing game where you roll dice to move around the board uh, with your little cars, but the thing about Formula D that's so cool is that each gear that you're in rolls a different sided die and gives you a different range of spaces to move. One die might give you a range between 2 and 4, while another die will give you a range between 11 and 20, depending on what gear you're in. And when you get to curves, you need to stop in them. Formula D is very similar to Age of Steam, which we just talked about, because Age of Steam has all these tracks for, you know, different maps for it, and Formula D has all these tracks that are out there for it. I believe there's like 30 plus different tracks. Uh, you can play it online. It's a lot of fun, and the new production by Asthma Day is absolutely gorgeous. It's a lot of fun. I I look forward to, you know, it's one of those games that I play and can play with quite a few people. So, number 97, Formula D. Number 96, Dungeon Twister. Now, here's a game that I can most certainly get behind, and that's Dungeon Twister. Twister. Dungeon Twister is a game that I've enjoyed for a long time. It's not about Twister. You know, I'm getting tired of saying that. No more. Okay, I'm done. I'm done explaining this game isn't Twister. Instead, we're going to say what it is. It's chess mixed with Lord of the Rings Confrontation mixed with a fantasy theme. Now, what makes Dungeon Twister so cool, or Dungeon Twister 2, there's not a lot of difference between the two different games, is that you have so many different characters to pick from, there's very little luck involved, it's more about outmaneuvering and outbluffing your opponent. Or, in some cases, being somewhat saner than your opponent. But anyway, there's huge variations of boards, huge variations of characters and things, especially when you start getting expansions. It's kind of been dormant for a while. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Dungeon Twister, although there's rumors that another expansion is in the works. But either way, it is a fantastic game, and really, there's nothing else like it on the market that I know of right now. Uh, it's not a dungeon crawl. It's more of a um, strategic outmaneuvering game. All right, well, that's enough I have to say about that, but your number 96 is Dungeon Twister. Number 95 is Werewolf. Werewolf. People love Werewolf. It's certainly one of those party games that I find to be very popular. There's many variations. Some people play with a deck of cards. Other people use the Asmodee version. Other people use uh, the DV version. Uh, then there's the Bezier games, Ultimate Werewolf. But the, the fact that it just goes so well. Now, some people are going to argue about this game being on the list. They're going to say, Werewolf is not a board game. It's not even a card game. It's kind of like a just a, an experience. Well, it's a most certainly a game. But the, there is no other game I know that so well psychologically gets into your head and makes you wonder just why people are acting the way they do. Werewolf works in so many situations. Of all the games on the lists that we're talking about, it's probably the one I played the most of, and it's one of the ones that I can go to anytime. So, good for you. I approve your choice, everyone, for number 95, Werewolf. Number 94 is Goat!
So Go. Go is one of those games, you know, it's not on my top 100 list. It's not even in my top 500. But don't get me wrong. I certainly understand the historical significance and the deep love that people have for this. Go is a lifestyle game. It's one of the few games that most people in the world know what it is, and it's probably the most played game in the world. When I lived in Korea, there was a TV channel that played Go 24-7 and taught how to play it. And I played it, and it made my brain go, Woo! You know, it's just, it's a tough game, but it's very strategic. It's very easy to balance between two people. You can give the other person a certain amount of stones and balance between someone who's a master and someone who is not. And uh, it's considered by many people to be the perfect game. And obviously, enough of you liked it to pick it for your number 94 game, which is Go. Number 93 is Dude. Dune. Now, Dune's an interesting game because as we are doing this top 100, Fantasy Flight Games is actually reproducing Dune and they're calling it Rex. It's a re-theming into the Twilight Imperium universe. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are upset about that. You know, the, the estate of the author of Dune did not give the rights to Dune. But Dune is a classic game. It has had many people, has had a lot of influence on games as time goes by. It, for several years, it was on my own top 100 list, and I would not be surprised if the new production Rex brought it back into. It is most definitely at its best with six. It really uh, incorporates the theme of Dune tremendously, although interesting enough, wasn't designed with Dune in mind, but has treachery, has fighting, and really was a groundbreaking game in a lot of regards. In fact, it's in the Dice Tower Hall of Fame because it's, you know, it's such an important game. And so uh, I can see why a lot of people love it. It's not played as much as you might think because, well, A, it's out of print. B, it's a fairly long game, four hours or so, and it requires six, maybe you can get away with five, to really function as well as it should. But when you do, you have a fantastic game. And so that is Dune. Number 92 is Bang! It's interesting, as I look at my own list, I look at my own numbers for Bang. Bang was originally 22 on my list, then it went to 78, then 104, then 203. And now I, I don't even rank it. I haven't ranked it for the last couple of years because it just has fallen off. That does not mean I think it's a bad game. It's just that I think better games have transcended it, uh, like Cash and Guns. But you ranked Bang higher than Cash and Guns. Cash and Guns was 101 for you. Bang is 92. But Bang is a game where, you know, you're attacking other players. You are... You know, but there's also hidden roles. And when I first played it, I was amazed at how neat it incorporated the idea of the Wild West, or at least our romanticized version of the Wild West, into a card game. And it's still going strong. There's still expansions, and the game seems to be very popular in many circles today. And obviously amongst you all, because it made it so high. But it's a card game, and a neat card game, and some very fun situations where you're trying to figure out exactly who the outlaws are at the table, and who the deputies are. Everyone knows who the sheriff is, and the sheriff is sitting there trying to figure out who his friends and foes are. A neat game, some, you know, it's a bit thematically odd, you know, when did the sheriff know who his deputies were? But hey, it makes for an absolute fun card party game, and obviously enough of you agree. So, number 92, bang. Number 91 is Apples to Apples. Probably the most popular party game of the last decade is Apples to Apples. And this is one of the few games that actually appears on all three top 100 lists. It is lowest on your list, but I, that's be, uh, who knows why. But it's still pretty high. Apples to Apples, a party game that you can bring and say, hey, which one of these is joyful? Is it Mel Gibson? Is it uh, Lemons? Is it My Room? Is it George Washington? Which one of those is joyful? And then you were trying to play a card and get the judge to pick it. It is a concept that has been copied in many, many party games and many party games that people really enjoy quite a bit certainly have their roots in this Apples to Apples, which was really an innovative style of a party game to come out. 
very popular, was originally produced by Out of the Box Publishing, but has been since picked up by Mattel, and well, that's great you know, to see such a cool game out in the mass market. For some people, it's cooled off a bit, and there's some people who don't like it at all, but I'm glad to see that enough of you liked it that it made number 91 on the Apples to Apples list. Well, that's it. That's the first 10 games from you all. We still have 90 more games to go. You know, this has been a very interesting list, but I think, you know, uh, while I may not be a big fan of all these games, there certainly is a lot here. Uh, there are certainly games that I think highly of, and I think you'll be surprised at some of the games that are higher up. And ugh, I can't believe that game even made it on here. Ugh. Well, but hey, oh, that's a good one. Huh. What am I talking about? Tune in next week and we'll see 10 more. If you like your top 10 list, you might also want to check out my top 100 list and my daughter Melody's top 100 list. Uh, those videos have also been posted. We'll be doing 10 a week. See you soon. Choice top 100 games of all time.